Hello everyone, it's Jerry Caudell, the Yankee Creek Stitcher, and I'm back for Floss Tube. It's number 14. It is Thursday, January 24th of 2019. I hope everyone's enjoying the year so far. Um, I was hoping for some snow. We've had two snowstorms come through and got about an inch of snow from each one. Um, it's gonna be really, really, really cold the next few days. Not a whole lot of snow, but it's gonna be very cold. Um, so hey, that's still some uh, hibernating time for me. <laughs> okay. Um, I did, um, this past week, take down one of my Christmas trees only to put another one up. <laughs> if you remember, I told you, uh, my mom and dad got me another Christmas tree this past Christmas. Um, so I was anxious to get it up because I wasn't exactly sure how big it was. Um, so I took the one down to have room to put the other one up. It is a... It's a color I had never seen before. It's like an antique gold and then it's flopped. Um, and when I say gold, it's not like a shiny gold, but it's not, it's it's just a beautiful color. It's pre-lit. Um, I took a couple pictures to show you and I'll, I'll insert them um, in this video. Um, it, but the, the lighting, you just, you know, you know how it is. Pictures just don't do it justice, so. Um, hopefully you'll see the beauty of it, but it's a very beautifully made tree that it's not just a perfectly shaped, uh, you know, a shaped tree. It's, you know, the branches go in and out on each level. So it's gorgeous. Um, I'm leaving it up for a little bit. Um, it's motivating me to get some of my prairie school ornaments, uh, going and hopefully completed. I, I did with the one Santa and snowman that I had completed previously. I went ahead and took it off my big tree and put it on the tree I just put up just, you know, just to have it there to give me my inspiration and motivation. So I'll insert a picture of that right here. Okay, and I wanted to share with you, um, this is not quilted yet. <clears throat> I had ordered this and completed this. I ordered, it was just scraps that they had pre-cut um, for this star, uh, wall hanging or quilt or what do you want, whatever I wanted to turn it into. I think I bought it off of Etsy. Um, but I don't remember the, the, I don't know if it's a Lone Star um, pattern, but it's, you know, it's all diamonds. Um, it was very easily pieced together. I just haven't quilted it yet. Um, but I thought it was so pretty. I was cleaning up my studio this, this weekend and, uh, came across it, folded up, put away on my shelves. So I thought, well, I'm going to hang that up for my background this week. Um, I just need to get it quilted. The quilting bag hasn't caught me yet I'm still um now that I got my hutch done and I got that tree up I um, am super excited to get some more stitching done and I have lots of fully finished uh, items to show you this week so I'm so excited to uh because a couple of these pieces I've actually got out on my hutch so I, it is really motivating me to get my stitching done so it's taken away from uh, or not really letting me get into a quilting mood. So I haven't worked anymore on my table runner or the, the country charmers quilt that I was going to put together. So no more progress on those yet, but I've made a lot of stitching progress this week. Okay. I don't have any purchases this week. So I'm right now I'm sticking to my, you know, goals of stitching from stash with uh, $25 or less in purchases. So I did have the magazine or the book, the Christmas ornament book last week. Um, and it was, I think 1750. So I'm doing good. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm doing great. Um, so no purchases to share with you, but I did have a start and a whip. 
the start is a prairie schooler santa it's the 1989 santa he's got a couple of cardinals and the bird feeder there oops Someone had commented, and I'm sorry I didn't make note of who it was, but she had commented that she is stitching her Prairie Schooler Santas on 28 count one over one. And I thought that was very intriguing because the size of these, um, if you stitched them over two, is about four by five, which is a little large, I think, for an ornament. So I thought, I'm going to see how this ornament's gonna look stitching it one over one. And this is my second project I'm working on, Stitching One Over One, and I love it. I love Stitching One Over One. So this is my progress thus far, and I didn't go through and add up the hours. It's probably been four or five hours worth of work. And this is a 28 count even weave that I tea and coffee dyed myself. Um, and I started out doing the border and then went into the wreath. And that's the bottom of his coat. And then this is the, his hood. Um, but I love stitching one over one. And the, the little details, I, I just love it. I'm glad whoever it was, and I, I apologize, I didn't, didn't take note of who it was that commented that, but I did tell them that I was trying that myself and I do love it. I'm not gonna stitch them all one over one, but to do a few one over one, I, I, I would definitely will. Just the tininess of it and seeing all that detail so tiny i just i just love that so that was my start in one of my whips my second whip um is the be mine from the primitive primitive hair the freebie that i got um i don't know i could not find it any longer on their website um but this is the chart and i had to put a little bit of extra work into it this weekend um, I had showed you last week the fabric, the uh, chocolate mudslide that I was stitching her on, the pink and the brown, and I had initially chosen, um, and I have kept wood smoke for my brown, but the, I think it was Everlasting Carnation, yeah, Everlasting Carnation from Victor Victorian Motto, it matched too well. <laughs> I got three letters stitched of mine, and you just could not see the letters well enough um so I had stitched about um, an hour and 15 minutes on those three letters and decided I'm just going to stop right there and so spent 45 minutes ripping out the one over one mm. it's quite painful <laughs> but I did it nonetheless I was I was uh determined I did end up finding, it's uh, the General Arts Old Red Paint is what I ended up going with. Um, it's obviously more of a red instead of a pink, and that's what it really, really needed. Um, so, you know, I had about three hours worth of work last night, stitching, ripping out, and then restitching um, in the red, and that's the about a third of the M, the I, and about a third of the N. So you at least can see how the colors are gonna work out. And I th I think that red is gonna look great on this fabric. So at least I you know, was able to keep most of it, salvage it, and just was able to find another color to, to go with that. So, and again, this is stitched one over one and I love it. I, I'm really enjoying it. And yes, I'm using my magnifying glasses the whole time. G Ginger Gerald, he amazes me. He stitches on 56 count without any uh, magnification glasses or any type of glasses at all. Just his eyesight on 56 count is amazing. Um, okay, so that was my two whips. Um, oh, no, no, no. I was using just a generic plastic bag for the Be Mine. So, of course, I hated to take away from stitching time, but I wanted to get a new project bag made for my Valentine's projects. 
because I do have a few more uh, Valentine's stitchings I'd like to do. So I'm really focusing on the, the Be Mine to have it done for Valentine's Day. Um, but I just put this little project back together. Um, I just strip pieced this and I had these cart hearts cut out. I'll show you the project these were cut out from in February. Um, I have a few Valentine quilts um, and table toppers that I'll share with you in February. But this heart was cut out from that and I've got, I don't know, six or eight. And I thought, I'm just gonna throw that on the top of there. I put some batting underneath of it so it's a little bit puffy. But I love it. Get you in the Valentine's mood. Okay, and I did have a one finish. Um, I didn't fully finish it yet. I did decide on the backing fabric, but I'm not sure if I wanna do this in a pillow or a, you know, just a flat fold um, or an ornament to hang. I'm, I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet, but I did finish it and I love it. This is the Cardinal Noel from Misty Purcell Luminous Fiber Arts. <clears throat> and I did modify the chart a little bit. I got the red throughout all the letters and I think that helped them stand out. Um, I know some people had uh, back stitched so they stood out a little bit more, but I was happy with the red dots there throughout each letter. Really happy with the way this turned out. I think the fabric, it was from Color and Cotton, and I think it was called Tea Leaves. So just a hint of green in it. I went ahead and cut out a, a fabric, depending on what I want to do with it, either a pillow or if it's a background fabric for a flat fold. A sparkly green so until I decide what I'm going to do with that it'll just be a finish for me I ha actually have five full finishes to share with you and I'm so excited I just got into a finishing mood like I said having that hutch done I just want to get some stuff in there and a couple of these items are already on it um, I did finish uh, the season's, season's greetings um, I still need to put the hanger on there and get my initials in the U stitched onto a little piece glued on the back there. But finish that with that beautiful fabric on the back. I, I got the male and the female cardinal after I fussy cut that. That was the one. I finished the Let It Snow into a pillow and I got the chenille trim. This is a Lady Dot to Create and I think it was called Vintage was the color. Um, so I was thrilled with that and I'm still gonna use a 2019 charm but still get my my initials uh, stitched on the back of that the next one I got done is my pineapple I've had this done for a while but not sure how I wanted to finish it this is a piece that I had bought from Kroger I don't remember if I showed it to you last week or the week before um, but it had the uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas or have yourself a Merry Little Christmas or something in the middle there. And I just took that off. Uh, glued some washers on the back, put some magnets in there. And uh, I did just put some quilt batting behind the stitching and there we go. I love it. It's just simple and just that galvanized tin in the back. I just love that. Number four, I went to Hobby Lobby to find something to put this piece on because I wanted to get it in my hutch. This is um, something that can, it can stay out all year. Um, it's my Beehive Matter. And it's just this wood, um, it's also magnets that I can just pop off and on. Um, it's just got the little leg in the back. So it'll just be propped up on my hutch. I love it. Oh, made a little crooked there. But yeah, I just use the washers and magnets. So if I do <clears throat> have something that I want to change it throughout the year, I have that option. So I got that idea from Priscilla and Chelsea and... 
I think it's great to be able to re reuse these um, for other projects through the year, just to switch them out, just change things up. And my fifth and final piece that I love, I had gotten this piece, <clears throat> oh, probably six or eight months ago at uh, Ben's Bargain Center. Um, they buy the clothes that stores that close or go out of business, whatever. They go through and buy up all the stock or out of season stuff. They buy everything. Um, so I had bought this, I, it had to been after last Christmas. Um, but it said, um, it said Noel, which would have, which would be pretty on its own. But I thought, you know, I could probably put it stitching in that, um, one day. And I, like I said, I was going through and cleaning my studio this past week and I came across it and I had my tis the seizing stitching on, um, my wall behind me here just I keep them up on my wall after I iron them just to you know keep them fresh in my mind of and try to get ideas of how I want to finish them and when I pulled this out of my closet I thought ah oh, I need to paint that distress it and put that in there and that's exactly what I did and I am thrilled with the outcome I mean I'm crooked but I have washers and magnets on the back of this but i did paint this it was gray it was a beautiful gray and it said it you probably can see some of the the letters in here it said noel on the back of it um and it was pretty itself but i did paint this um it was like a cream it wasn't chalk paint it was just a cream paint color i just sprayed it on there let it dry for a little bit and then scrubbed it up with my sanding paper um I put but, uh, the stitching on sticky board with some quilt cool batting underneath the stitching and then just a matte board with the green and cream uh, gingham hot glued on there. And like I said, I put some washers and magnets on the back of it. I love it. It is <clears throat> setting in my hutch and I'm thrilled with the outcome. Um, that's why I try to leave by stitching, you know, out visible, keeping fresh in my mind. And as I'm going through things in my house, um, I was watching, well, not watching, it was on Priscilla's blog. Um, she had cheese graters, the old cheese graters. I have three of those and I have them displayed in a basket. Um, in the, just in the winter time, I have them in a basket with some fluffy white stuff around them and just, I put in there with some ribbons around them and stuff. And my husband and kids are always like, why do you have cheese graters in a basket? <laughs> I like it. Um, and then Priscilla, if you watch her or if you follow her blog, she had shared, um, I think it was a snowman she had stitched and put it on the face of the cheese grater. Oh my gosh. I showed it to my husband. I'm like, this is what I can do with my cheese graters and you all won't make fun of me anymore. <laughs> so now I have to get me some charts together that will fit my cheese graters. <laughs> so I will be on a mission. That's I try to keep things sitting out and visible so they stay fresh in my mind as I'm coming across different things. Oh, that would fit on this. And this that you might would, you know, would look good on this piece. And, it's amazing what you can find just sitting around your house to finish. So I was thrilled with getting all these full finishes under my belt this week. Um, so uh, getting my hutch finished and these pieces finished, um, I found three more pieces of furniture in my home that I want to chalk paint and distress. So our detached garage um, has a fireplace um, out in it and since it's been so cold um, my husband keeps the fire going so the water lines don't freeze so right now it's nice and warm out in my garage <laughs> so I've got my pieces out there that I'm going to go fin uh, paint this evening um, and finish and so they should be ready to show you on next week's floss tube um that's what I have planned I'm um, also um 
I want to get started on the Early American series that Little House Needleworks has. Um, it's nine charts, um, and I'm working on getting some fabric for that. Um, so my plans this week are paint and distress some furniture. Um, continue working on the Be Mine to have that finished. And I'm not sure how I'm going to finish that yet. Um, probably a pillow. So, yeah. That's what I got going. Uh, oh, and continue my Prairie School or Santa and probably start another one. I would like to get several of those going so the tree looks somewhat, you know, put together for next Christmas. Um, it's going to be short and sweet this week. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me today. Um, if you're a subscriber, I really appreciate you following, following me and coming back each week. And if you're new and just visiting, hit that subscribe button. And um, I hope to bring you some new and exciting stuff every week. So until then, stay warm and cross your fingers to have lots of snow. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by and happy stitching.